Okay, uh, right. Uh, so uh, last week we did we talked about the the one S model. And we derived the Hilbert, Hilbert space of states. And I'll just put some highlights up. Um, so we still had an SO, we had an SO32 um, gauge group. So I'll just put GG. Um, and if you remember, we a few a couple of lectures ago, I wrote this this sort of cheat or quick way to understand the, the gauge group of the model. So um, from the NS sector, you get a set of gauge bosons, which are the states that come with a, because gauge bosons should be vectors, they come with a single space-time index, which is the oscillator from the sine mu. Um, and then, in order to make um, the NS sector massless, you have on the anti-holomorphic side, you need to contribute one to the, the, the mass. So you can use two fermionic oscillators or one bosonic operator. In the case of the, the two, um, bosonic, uh, two fermionic oscillators, um, this um, and this, Acting on the NS vacuum, um, the, 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 so the um, choices for A and B uh, will be different in different models. But um, in, in general, the, the, this is where your your gauge bosons always come from. And if you look at the basis of your model, if um, these, so if you look at the boundary conditions. In um, in the basis vectors, um, the here if you do the GSO projections, you'll see that um, it, it, if if these five bars, the ones with the same boundary conditions in the basis vectors, will um, will will go together uh, into one block. And if so, if you have in general. The rule that I gave you is that if you have n um, complex fermions uh, with uh, same boundary conditions um, for all the basis vectors in the basis, um, then you have an SO. To n gauge symmetry, um, and that's assume, that's actually assuming um, we have real boundary conditions like we always have been for for, for this um, for these lectures so far. So um, here we have SO thirty two because all of the five bars have the same boundary conditions in one and S. So in one, all the five bars have boundary condition one, and in S. All the five bars have boundary condition zero. So they have the same boundary condition in each basis vector. So they form an SO2n, which is SO2 times 16. Okay. So that was just um, an explanation, recap. So what else did we find for the 1 and S model? Um, the tachyon, which was the NS, so it was from the NS sector. We had a tachyon that was possible when we acted on the vacuum um, with a single uh, fermionic oscillator. That made the state have mass uh, minus one half on the holomorphic and anti-holomorphic. And um, this tachyon is projected, uh, we found last week, by S. We do the GSO projection with S, and this state is uh, essentially incompatible. It's, it's always, it's automatically um, doesn't match the GSO projection. So it's projected.
Um, and that's good because we don't want tachyons in the theory because they destabilize the theory. And um, is there anything else to say about this? So um, I'm also going to discuss in a in a later lecture. I'll discuss the partition function for this model. And one thing that would see if we do the partition function is we can show that the partition function for this is zero um, in the end. Um, so you write the theta functions and we can use an identity, which is related. So a theta function identity, and we'll show, we can show that the partition function vanishes, which is what we'd expect because this theory we actually saw, um, it had supersymmetry, supersymmetry. Um, and it was it was uh, n equals one supersymmetry, um, and the main point about that is that we we found the the gravitino. So there's a state from the s sector. So from the s sector, uh, we found a state which um, was a spin three halves uh, in that it was um, a uh, a space time. Um, so it acted, uh, the oscillator we used the, so in the S sector, in order to get the anti holomorphic mass up to the massless level, you need to plus one, like in the NS we just said. So you plus one, um, so you can use the bosonic anti holomorphic um, operator, and that will act on these. The vacuum S, and the vacuum S is the Ramond, uh, sorry, it is the doubly degenerate state of psi mu. So this is a, uh, this is the you know the psi mu uh, vacuum, and this is a spinner. So essentially, plus or minus a half. And this is a like a sort of uh, spin one is a, is a sort of vector, um, and so very sort of um, roughly speaking, you can just uh, you can that's the, the logic to seeing this is a, a spin three half state. Um, so it's one plus a half, just as a sort of motivation. So this um, is, uh, the, the, this kind of state is a gravitina. That's just the name for it. Um, and it is precisely the counterpart, the super partner of the spin two states, which come from the NS, which is the graviton. That's why it's called the gravitina. We always call it like Eno, it's like the super partner. Um, so, so it, like a spin one state has a super partner, which is spin a half. Um, in the same way, a spin two state, the gravity, the graviton in the NS sector will have a super partner in a supersymmetric theory, which is called the gravitino, which would have then spin three halves. Um, and uh, we could go more into the like super supersymmetric representations and stuff, but we we'll maybe talk about that later another time. That's the main point about having n equals one supersymmetry. And actually, the point was that these two facts, um, so the fact that we projected the, the tachyon and the fact that we have supersymmetry are connected to each other because they come from the S vector. So the S vector is what projects the tachyon and the S vector is what generates this state, which is the super partner of the graviton. Uh, which gives you supersymmetry. So you can't. You, so in this setup, you you know, in order to project this tachyon, you 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 sort of naturally get supersymmetry. Okay. And, and we kind of also saw that the the GSO project the GSO phases didn't really have the, the, these points are sort of independent of the GSO phases. The GSO phases have a, a smaller impact on generating the, they might affect the chirality of this, but um, this doesn't change the fact that there's a graviton, uh, sorry, a gravitino in the spectrum. Um, 
So this is really the main the main um, points I just want to recap from last time. And then, so at the end of last time, I also suggested as homework um, adding uh, another vector into the basic. Um, which I'll call zeta um, because I'm not very good with Greek letters. I'm not sure if that's actually called x i or zeta. But, um, anyway, so um, so this x i was um, the vector in which we give periodic. We give periodic boundary conditions to the first eight of the five bar, um, the gauge um, fermions, um, which remember is the same as writing um, zero to the four, um, one, eight, zero, eight. Um. And I wanted to set the death. Like what? So what's the impact of adding that vector? And so um, at a, a certain level, you can start off by thinking, okay, well we've got the one and s model, and we, we kind of already know a bit about the one and s model. We derive the massless states. So then you just kind of think about adding the zeta and what effect that has on the GSO projections, but also in additional um, sectors in the theory. Um, so I'm going to use what I said before about the NS sector, about the gauge bosons. So um, I'm not going to derive this, but if you check the um, GSO projections, when, when you do the GSO projection zeta on the gauge bosons, you will see this result that I just said about SO2n. Um, SO2N um, for, so I'll just write it like this. So, um, so you get the gauge bosons from the five bar one to eight and um, the gauge boson for five bar nine to 16. And they kind of separate. In the G in, when you do the GSO projection. So that is uh, eight complex fermions. So this is 16, okay? 16. So now we have um, what would be called, what, what, what we, we, we would write as um, FO16 cross FO16. 16, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the main thing I'd pick out that's new about the NS sector. Doing the GSO projection zeta splits these, these boundary conditions. Um, so remember that actually in the NS sector, when you have these gauge bosons, um, when I write this, these can also be complex conjugate. And actually, there's there's really sort of three cases here, which is um, where one of them is complex conjugate, and the other one isn't, and then another one where they're both complex conjugate. So, so um, it's really looking at these combinations, which generates the, the full um, sort of counting that gives you the full representation. But uh, I've kind of been skirting over that. So just remember that you have always, if you have a complex oscillator, you can always take the complex conjugate of it. And Okay, so the NS sector, uh, I'll just rub this out. So SO16 cross SO16 of the gauge boson. And then if we do the S sector, um, so in the S sector, 
we could look at the gravitino. So let's look at the gravitino. Um, so if we have this gravitino state, and we do the zeta projection, ESO projection, then um, what we what we see, so one, one point that I didn't mention last time that's, that's useful is the first thing to say here is that, um, that zeta, if you did the intersection or if you did the dot product, maybe it's easier to say the dot product, the dot product of F, you could, so, this is, um, you think of zeta, it's just got these five bars in it. S only has the sign mu in it. So this is zero. Um, or if you write as sets, you could say the intersection is zero or the empty set. And whenever that happens, the GSO projection is going to be quite simple because one, the, the side with the dot product is going to be zero. Which it, or the dot product is going to be zero, which makes it exponential of zero, which makes it plus one. And then the only thing that's that changes is the GSO phase. So if you if you take the GSO projection, you'll see this because you have e to the i pi of zeta. So we're doing the projection with zeta on the f um, of this state s. So we have. Um, here we could take the oscillator part, and then we also have the, the vacuum part, so F of just the S vacuum. But we know that the fermion number of this bosonic operator is zero, and this is always going to be zero because zeta is, um, is only periodic in these five bars. So, um, and then in, in those five bars, F, S is zero. So this is the zero overall. So this is um, zero. So this whole thing is plus one. Um, and then on the other side, we have delta of um, S, C of S, um, Zeta. Okay. And we know that delta of S should be minus one because um, S has the space time fermion, it's a fermionic sector. So this phase, plus or minus one, is the only thing that varies here. And so the fact, so that's, so what I'm saying here is that this fact that there's no intersection between the state and the projecting vector, this means that the GSO phase only depends on, sorry, the GSO projection only depends on the GSO phase, the sign of the GSO phase. Um, so what we see here is that if, if this phase is negative, then this gravitino is still in the spectrum, but if it's positive, then these two sides don't match and it's projected out of the spectrum. So maybe I'll just summarize that here. So yeah, whenever you see like a vector that has no intersection or no dot product, then you can quickly jump to the GSO phase. So the GSO phase S with zeta, um, if it equals plus one, then, then the gravitino uh, is projected. And if it's minus one, the gravitino is not projected or remain in the spectrum. So if the gravitino is projected, then now we have uh, no supersymmetry. Um, so n equals zero. So it's another way of saying that. There's no supersymmetry. Um, whereas if it remains, then we still have the supersymmetry we had for the one and S model. Okay. 
So what we see is that this GSO phase determines whether we have supersymmetry or not. Um, okay. And okay, so now we might wonder then, well, before we said in the 1 and S model that supersymmetry um, necessitated the projection of the tachyon because the S vector projected the tachyon, but it also gave us the gravitino. But here we said that this extra vector can project the gravitino. But um, note um, that the tachyon, so the tachyon uh, rod is phi bar n. Well, sorry, phi bar ns. So. so you have this, this tachyon state. Well, nothing's changed in regards to the tachyon because the tachyon still has the S projection. So the S, um, S still projects it. Okay. Um, so what we see is that that we can, depending on this phase, we can we can generate two different theories, both with no tachyons, but one that has supersymmetry and one that doesn't. Okay. Um, this fact of like the intersection being zero or the dot product being zero, um, it's kind of. I prefer saying the intersection because the dot products could be zero if you have left and right fermions that match, because then the left minus the right would be zero. But if you say the intersection, it means there are no common periodic fermions. There are no periodic fermions, no fermions that are periodic in both this and this. Um, we, we, will, we will often use this idea and call this a projecting vector. Well, this is kind of some terminology that I use just to, okay. So zeta would be a projecting vector on S because it has no intersection, which means that the GSO projection becomes something which selects, it's like a selection of in or out. If it's this value, it's out. If it's this value, it's in. So it immediately tells you like, a sort of selection condition. It doesn't just give you a constraint on the state. It actually projects it in or out. Okay. Um, so now we can, uh, I'll summarize what we found. But so, so far what we found is that this zeta is given as SO16 cross SO16. And we found that depending on the GSO phase, we can either have supersymmetry or not. Um, but in all cases, we still project the gravitino. They're the main results so far. Um, but now we have to think about, um, okay, this zeta also add new sectors, right? So we also have the zeta sector. We also have um, potentially um, S plus theta. Um, we also could have uh, one plus theta. Uh, we could have one plus N plus theta. Um, first thing we can do is check whether these can be mass massless. And if any of them are massive, we can just ignore them. So um, this one I can tell should be fine. So this is, um, you might say, what I call a zero eight. So it has eight um, anti-holomorphic fermions that are periodic. So um, in the mass formula eight, there's an eight over eight. So there, it's only when this number is bigger than eight that it should become massive. And uh, when this number uh, is bigger than four, it would become massive. Um, so you can just have a think about this notation. Um, 
one but so f and zeta would be these would be um all periodic um so uh here so zeta it has no periodic polymorphic so i'm just saying there's zero periodic and there's eight anti period so there's eight anti holomorphic that are periodic and then this quickly tells me the mass so the mass formula remember is minus a half plus um so th these are like the alpha um dot so here it would be zeta dot zeta on the holomorphic side over eight and then MA anti holomorphic would be minus one plus zeta dot zeta on that anti holomorphic. Um, so these numbers are just this and this. And and because you you kind of can then if you get used to it, you'll quickly tell, okay, this is eight. If it's greater than eight, this will be more than one, so it become massive. And here, if this is more than four, then it, this becomes massive because then you've got four over eight or more than four over eight plus a half, sorry, minus a half. And then overall, that's greater than zero. Is zero over eight? So here it's zero over eight, so it's minus a half. Um, yeah. So yeah, so you could, you could always, it's this this is just a quick notation for like you could also write it as so zero over half you could write as let's say in terms of the masses this would be minus a half uh, and then one sorry minus one plus one so this is a in terms of the dot products on the left and the right on the holomorphic and anti holomorphic this is in terms of the masses. Um, and then, and then four eight. Well, four that's going to be four over eight. So it's minus a half plus four over eight. So that would be like zero. So four eight is a zero zero in mass. Um, but um, you can also just think about it in terms of the dot products. If you get if you just get used to reading it as like four means that you're going to make that mass massless. Um, without any oscillators, just the vacuum itself has a is massless. And if this is eight, then that's massless uh, on the anti-holomorphic type. Um, one plus zeta um, is going to be so you've got zeta here. So if you add one to it, these become periodic, and these become periodic. And this is zero. Yeah. yeah. So um, therefore, you would have four on this side and eight on the other side. So that's massless. And then if you had one plus s plus zeta, well, one plus zeta, we just said, so we add s, then if we add s, that means these go back to zero. So uh, you can just write it out. So one, one, plus, s, one plus zeta became this. You know, and then you add s, and this changes because s s is just the space time fermion. Yeah. So it becomes that, which is um, zero eight. Okay, so that's minus a half mass and zero. So actually, all of these states could be massless. So this one, um, so this one and this one, these need a, um, so these two need an oscillator on the left, oh, sorry, on the, on the holomorphic side. So you could say a frequency half oscillator. Um, but these two don't, these two are already massless. Okay. Well, 
right? Um, so now we can look at them one by one. So what I'll do is now say, okay, it was this one and this one that had oscillators. So maybe I'll just rewrite slightly. So here we had um, some oscillator. So in this case, we only can use the sign mu as the oscillator because it's the only holomorphic fermion. So sine mu uh, has to be the oscillator for zeta and for this one as well. So both of these needed um, an oscillator. So both of these needed a anti sorry a holomorphic oscillator that makes the mass go up by a half. It's their frequency a half oscillator. The only um, holomorphic fermion is the sine mu. Um, so it was just this, you know, in the mass formula when we had the. Um, so let's take this example with Vita. Yeah. So this this additional. So here we have zeta dot zeta was four. So that means um, we had, uh, sorry, it was zero because, yeah, so it's zero. And then, um, so basically, uh, and okay, for massless states. And the only, the only oscillator that can do that is sine mu, okay? So sometimes you put that frequency here. But... Um, so now let's look at um, this state here. So um, the I'm going to do. I'm not going to do every uh, the projection with one, the one the one basis vector. Because the one basis vector doesn't really do much. It, it, it will just fix the overall, it kind of just fixes an overall sign that doesn't really change the, the physics. So more interesting will be the S projection. So let's do the S projection. So the S GSO projection on this state. Well, the first thing we notice is the S. Um, so S does have, has no intersection with zeta, we said before. So S dot zeta is zero. Um, so if we do the GSO projection, we've got um, S dot F, and then we have the oscillator, sine mu. And this part, remember that part's going to be, um, like sine mu and s, like s has um, is, sine mu is periodic in s, so this is this is not zero, but the other part is zero. So s dot f of zeta, that's going to be zero because s um, has no periodic fermions in zeta. Okay. And on the other side, we've got delta of zeta, which is, so what's delta of zeta? Um, one. Yes, good. Yeah, but that's plus one because it's, it's um, aperiodic or bosonic, bosonic sector. And then you have the GSO phase, um, zeta with S. And um, this, so S dot F of sine mu is minus one because S, so sine mu is periodic, so it's one multiplied by the fermion number of sine mu. And the fermion number of a fermionic oscillator is minus one. 
So it's one times minus one. This is zero. So this is e to the minus i pi, uh, which is minus one. And um, then, then we see that everything depends on this. So whether or not this is projected or not depends on that phase. No, sorry. So this bit here is, so this is minus one. So this is e to the minus i pi, which is minus one. Um, so whether this is projected or not just depends on this phase. So I'll just write the condition on the phase. So this is what we'd expect because we said that zeta and s have no intersection. So uh, s is a projecting vector on zeta in the language that I said before. Um, and that means that we, sh we should expect that the GSO phase between them will just tell you whether the state is in or out, okay? So the in or out condition here will be um, as, as follows. So in or out will be, um, so S projection, we basically got C of zeta with S is equal, and if it's minus one, the state was in, and if it's plus one, it's out. So, um, so plus one is out, minus one is in, or this psi mu of zeta. Um, so let's say we take this case when it's in, right? So if it's in, we have to say like, what is this? Um, And this state. So this, if we do have this state, we have to kind of give it an interpretation, right? Like, so we know what it means in the physics of the theory. So what does this state mean? Well, um, we have a space-time index. So this is a vector. This is a vector. Um, and then this is a spinorial so, so this is a spinorial, um, uh, spinorial vacuum of, of zeta, but um, so this is actually a vector, this is a gauge boson. So this is a gauge boson. Um, so it's a vector gauge boson and this, um, this zeta here, um, so I also need to say something else in a second, but um, so this, remember what this vacuum means, right? This is the vacuum, like plus minus for the first one, first five bar, cross with the Raman vacuum for the second one, Etc. So you remember when we when we said uh, when we talk about a, a sector like this, what we what we're saying associated to every sector is a vacuum, and the vacuum is a, a sort of you, you join together. The vacuum for all the fermions. And all of the fermions that are periodic, they're going to have this spinner vacuum, this Ramon vacuum, which is either plus or minus. So the the, the main part, so the, the, the interesting part of the vacuum is the Ramon vacuum part, which is eight. So there are eight fermions, eight complex fermions um, here that are periodic. So there are eight Ramon vacuums. 
and you, in general you would have to sort of tense them together that would be the the sort of correct way to to do it but to think of it but um what so what and maybe a more natural notation for this that we use is um you could write it like this okay um Now, I, I didn't do the, um, the the GSO projection with one, the one basis vector. But if you did the GSO projection with one, then because one is periodic in every fermion, right, it would basically end up telling you in the GSO projection that um, this would either be, um, it would, I don't want to write it all out, but you can just check it yourself. So the, 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 what it would tell you is that each of these eights, it can either be plus or minus. If, if, it's, if it's plus, the fermion number is zero. If it's minus, the fermion number is minus one. Um, so overall, what the GSO projection would tell you, and you can check, is that this is either going to be A, um, what we all call eight odd, or so the, I'll just put this. So the one projection, the total is eight odd or eight even. And what that means is, um, so let's let's write this a little bit more compact. So this is, let's write it like that. So this eight odd would be like saying um, plus or minus to the eight um, with um, the number of minuses, so the number of the, if you minus one fermion number, the number of minuses equals an odd number. And this one, eight even, would be like with um, the number plus even. even. Okay. And um, in general, if, if, if you didn't have this projection, then this state here. So this state with eight plus or minuses, so there's eight things that have two options. So there's really two to the eight um, choices for plus or minus. If you do this projection, you have odd or even, and that actually was split it. This is now two to the eight minus one of these, and two to the eight minus one of these. Because like half of them are odd, half of them are even, essentially. Um, and these are so. This is that what we've done there really is um, in, in in general what you have in in terms of the sort of representation in theory would be that like this is a spinner representation. That's what what we call a spinner representation because there are, um, all the objects are spinners and they, they're plus or minus. So that's what, what defines a spinner, right? It has two, two states. And in general, you'd have two to the N, if you have N fermions, you'd have two to the N. But the, when, when we're doing physics, we always want the irreducible representations, which means the representations that can't be broken down anymore. And um, it turns out that the natural way to do that is to split them into odd and even. Um, so th these are the irreducible representations of a spinner. A spinner. Okay. Um, and so there are two to the seven of each uh, in this case. And then overall, you get two to the eight because you have two options. Two times two to the seven is two to the eight. Um, so what we have is 
that these states, so we, we see that they're gauge bosons because they have this sign mu, but they also have this spinner vacuum. And this spinner vacuum will either be odd or even. And we call the odd or even, we could call it the chirality of the spinner. Chirality would be like whether it's, yeah, whether it's odd or even. Um, you might have, you should have, yeah, you would have seen something about, for example, the gamma, you know, the gammas in the spinner in Dirac theory. Um, and you have gamma five in four dimensions, which chooses the chirality of the spinners. Ultimately, what you're doing there is the uh, representations of spinners. And the gamma five chooses the two options, chirality. And that's the two options that give you the irreducible representations of a spinner. Um, okay, so uh, what we said there was that we have eight options, but then the, the GSA projections make it either plus or minus, or sorry, odd or even. So there are two to the seven, um, this is a two to the seven dimension, dimensional spinner, spinner representation, okay? Two to the seven is one, two, eight, I think. Um, so 32 is two to the five, 64, two to the six, 128, two to the seven, yeah. So, the, so what you've got here is a essentially a one, one, two, eight spinorial. So you've got a vector boson that transforms in the one, two, eight spinorial um, representation. I know it's a bit, a bit confusing, but uh, in terms of the physics, we have to use, you know, you interpret physics and particles and states in terms of group theory and representations of, of groups. So this tells us the physics of this theory. And this is a gauge boson. And so that actually changes the overall gauge group. So what this does is actually, um, so what this does is it tells us that the SO16, so the SO16 that we got for the NS um, sector for the phi bar one, two, eight. So we got an SO16 from the NS, didn't we? Um, but then if we have also, here we're getting additional gauge bosons, and these are the one, two, eight. So if you, you essentially add these gauge bosons, which are in the one, two, eight spinorial, this, uh, in terms of the, in, in terms of like group theory, this changes the overall group because you have an extra, some extra gauge bosons basically that generate a bigger group. And that bigger group is actually called E8. So E8 is one of the, is a Lie group um, and a Lie algebra, um, but it's a special one, but it's one of the five exceptional groups. Um, and it contains in it the SO16, but it's a bigger group. Um, and maybe we can talk more about it another another lecture. We can go on more on group theory or representation theory or Lie algebras or whatever. But um, that's that's what you need to to sort of you just need to sort of know. Or I just, I think for now we'll just accept that that's how it works. This is just a this group contains what would be in the Lie algebra would be the roots of these of this group. Um, but then you enhance the group. So this is. This is sometimes called, and we will generally use this term, this, this gauge boson, this state, is also called an enhancement. An enhancement of the gauge group, because it's a gauge boson that's not part of the NS sector. It's not the, yeah, it's not the NS um, gauge bosons, but there are additional gauge bosons because we saw that we could operate with psi mu. Um, and it makes the gauge group of the whole theory bigger. Um, and so that's called a gauge enhancement or an enhancement. Okay.
So we, we also had the other SO16, but the other SO16 so far is still SO16, B for B, 5R9 to 16. Um, that's, that's, the, that's what we need to say about this state. I'm going to do this state now because it's very similar. Um, so if we do this, this state, So this state here, remember that, um, so one plus S plus theta would be this. Which is also written as this. So this is basically like the other set of, um, the gauge fermions, the nine to 16. Okay, so this is where the, these ones are periodic rather than the other ones. So this is basically like zeta, but it's just slipped the fermions on there, or anti-holomorphic style. Um, so you can kind of imagine that it's gonna be, some, it's gonna be quite similar to what we got for this one, um, because it's the same, except that you just, change the phi's around. And we actually get, so the key projection for this. Um, well, I mean, th this, this state is very similar to this. We just have, um, you know, the nine to 16 rather than the one to eight. So um, for example, if we do the S projection, um, the S projection is going to be essentially the same. On the on, on one side, you've got A to the I pi, and then you've got um, S dot F of sine mu, and then the other part, which is zero, because there's no overlap. And then Then this um, is delta one plus f of theta c of s one plus f of theta okay this is minus one as before so overall this side is minus one okay and then again, this is plus one like before. And then this phase determines whether or not this state survives. So, so it's all the same analysis. Um, but this time the selection rule, if you like, the selection on the phase is C1 plus S plus theta is uh, equal to um, if this is minus, it's in, and if it's plus, it's out. Okay. And so again, if we do the in, if we if we do keep this sector, we can interpret it, and it's exactly the same interpretation as before, because what we've got is. This spinorial vacuum, but for um, the other five the bars, because they're now the periodic ones that have a spinorial vacuum. But the interpretation is the same. If you do the projection with one, this is going to be a um, an even or not chirality. So it's again, it's going to be, um, so again, this is going to be a one, two, eight binaural gauge boson. Okay. And again, if this state is in, then it's going to enhance the gauge group to E8. So the other SO16 
will become uh, E8 relating to this um, these um, five bar one, nine to sixteen this time. Okay. Good. Um, that that's the main part of this theory. I mean, we can also do these states. Um, but it's not so interesting. I mean, what I'll say about these two, these two, uh, yeah, no, I, I should say something about them actually. Let me just. Um... Yeah, I should say something about these two as well. So, um, so S plus eta is going to be um, essentially at the massless level. It's going to be um, associated with the the vacuum psi mu from S. Um, so that's the holomorphic side. And then it's going to be this um, spinoral vacuum to the eight uh, anti holomorphic gauge one to eight by Bart. So what you need to know about this, this is a pure um, a pure spinner, but it's um, this will be spin half. Um, because um, in space time, because of the psi mu, um, is a spinner. Um, and actually, this will be uh, if you do the GSO projections, what you'll find um, is that basic. Well, okay, I'll just give you the results. So, this is actually the super partner of this state. Sign mu zeta. And um, in general, if you have a, a super partner of a state like this, which was a gauge boson, um, any the super partner of a gauge boson should be spin half, and it should be, it's called a gauge ini. Okay. Um, and similarly, similarly, one plus zeta is going to be the super partner of this, which is the gauging for this this state. Because uh, one plus zeta, so one plus zeta is. Um, Um, one plus theta is this. So it's um, it's the same as the um, one plus s plus theta, but you just have periodic here. So you've essentially changed from a boson to a fermion by adding the sign mu. So that's partly why it's like a super um, partner. Um, and and what you get is so here you'd have instead of s plus theta, you've got one plus theta. Which is like adding, so yeah, getting rid of the S here. And then that's going to give you, instead of 5 bar 1 to 8 here, you're going to get 9 to 16. Um, and you're going to have, again, a super partner of, instead of this, you're going to have the super partner of this guy, 1 plus S plus um, zeta. And again, this is interpreted like a, the gauge ini, the super partners of the gauge bosons that we just talked about. And in general, this, this is just a useful point maybe to mention that, so this is a more general idea that um, any sector, so in the free fermioni models, any sector, um, alpha 
So for, for any sector alpha, um, S plus alpha um, the S will always change the change the um, uh, the, the sign mu um, from periodic to aperiodic. So it'll change the boundary conditions, which is the same as changing the, the state from fermionic to bosonic or bosonic to fermionic. Because that's like the spin statistics, that's what it tells us. The spin statistics thing the delta tells us whether it's plus or minus one, that's the same as telling us in space time whether it's a boson or a fermion. So um, for any sector alpha, S plus alpha is, or gives, uh, I mean, it, you know, if you make sure they, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this is fine. So it gives the super partner or super partner Um, so this is another reason why we think of S as um, S is to do with supersymmetry. So S, S is like the supersymmetry generating vector in the sense that S, you can add it onto any sector and it will kind of balance it out. So you always have a fermion copy, like copied with a boson. So you always have both. And overall, you have a supersymmetric theory, um, which can be changed by the GSO phases. but. In general, S, as long as S is there, then you can have supersymmetry. Okay. Um, right, so now we can summarize this model. We've, we've, we've shown everything about the mass of states. And then we'll stop, I think. I don't know what time it is. Okay, yeah, we'll just summarize what we found. Okay. Um, we have to say one, there's one other detail I didn't give before this time. Um, so yeah, one thing I, I said before, for this state, this one, the one with five bar nine to 16, we said that the phase um, S with one plus S plus zeta, it was this phase that chose whether the state was in or out, um, right? But we can use the GSO rules to simplify this because this is, um, this is some on the bottom. We can use one of the GSO rules that tells us how to write the GSO phase between a sum um, into um, just the GSO phase between the individual parts. Um, and the rule is we can do delta of S. So if we do delta, we have to do delta with the thing on the top. Uh, and then it decomposes this part and would leave this part. And then if you did it again, you would get another one. And overall, you'd get CS with one. So you'd get CS with the first part, CS with the second part, and then CS with the third part. And um, actually, so delta S, delta S is going to be plus one overall. Because, well, I mean, it's minus one times minus one. Any delta times delta should be, should, will be plus one. Um, so this is plus one, so I can just get rid of it. Um, CS1 and CSS. So you remember I talked about the GSO phases. You can, you can rewrite this. So remember, there's a rule for any, um, any like, the same you can write as S with one. You can write in terms of like one and VI. So there's a rule that relates these two. And actually, um, so the rule is this one, so E to the I, I over four, and there's a minus sign there, and then C VI one, yeah. So this um, actually relates it actually makes these two the same. So th this will show that this one is actually equal to that one. Okay. So these two are equal. And um, yeah, okay. And then actually there's only really this phase 
Um, so because because these two are equal, they cancel out because this will be it's either plus one times plus one or minus one times minus one. So it's plus one overall. So these two are actually irrelevant. And so actually this phase is really just equal to this. So this phase here is equal to Cs of zeta. And if you remember for this state, the other gauge boson state, that these um, were also determined by this. So actually this, um, this phase, if it's plus or minus one, um, actually, uh, if it's, I think if it was, so if it was minus one, then it was in. So this is minus one, um, both, so both the enhancements or the, both the gauge boson states, So both time mu, um, zeta, and sine mu are one plus f plus theta are in. And then if this phase is plus one, then they're both out. So actually this phase is what determines um, this um, whether the gauge group is enhanced to E8 uh, or not in both parts, so both uh, SO16s. Um, but also we found before, when we did the, when we looked at the S sector, that this phase also could project the graviton. Sorry, the gravitina. So, but also, so, so I'll simplify this now. So both, um, so what I'll write here is instead, so minus one, both were in. So this was like, we get E8 cross E8 because both of the SA16s become E8. So E8, so this, this is the gauge group of the theory now. So initially, we just said it was SO16 cross SO16 from the NS sector. But then these, these gauge bosons make it bigger. So this bigger group, which is called E8. So it's two factors of E8, one for these, one for these. OK. And then if, if it was plus one, we've got SO16. We just have the group from the NS sector. We only have gauge bosons from the NS sector, which is these FO groups. Okay. But also we said in the um, the S sector for the gravitino, so the state, um, so del del X bar of F, del X bar of F, To the gravitino, if this was minus one, then um, then this state was in, and if if it was um, plus one, then it was out. GSO projection projects out the gravitino. So this means that if you have this phase minus one, then this is uh, in, which means you have n equals one supersymmetry. But if this is out, then you have no supersymmetry. So this is what I, I wanted you to find in the, this is really the summary of this model, the key summary, that this phase determines everything about this model, S with zeta. Everything that's important anyway, the gauge group, E8 cross E8 or SO16, and whether the theory has supersymmetry or not. So the two things are, 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 are correlate, they, they go together. And remember that both theories are tachyon free. There's no tachyon because the S, the S, um, the S uh, vector still projects tachyon. So really we get 
in the in this um, with this basis, this is what we find basically that we have two different um, tachyon free models. So there are um, so there are so this basis. The result is there are two tachyon free. Um, such that um, this phase determines the gauge group EA cos EA or 16 cos 6, SO16 cos SO16, and whether or not you have any gravitini, whether you have any supersymmetry. Okay, so that's the headline of, of, this, of this model. So that's what happened with this extra basis vector. Okay, I think that's a good place to stop. Um, and then next week we can summarize the 10D models and then we can start doing 4D models. <laughs> okay. <laughs>